let's uh, let's get things started. We were 23 people from all over the world, um, and I'm well. I think the word is honored to just give you an inside view of what I think um, the coronavirus uh, will have an impact on our event industry, and of course, it will be looking into the future. So this will not be uh, your guidance for the rest of the month, but I hope you have some insights and some maybe even some uh, inspiration out of it. Um, so to start off with, uh, and thank you for all being here. Um, I of course have to start off with myself. Uh, so the slides work perfectly. Um, my name is Stuart. Um, on the screen you see, I'm very well known for undressing myself at stages whenever I win an award. <laughs> Uh, this was during the Bea World um, in, um, in, in Porto, in Portugal. Uh, but on the right side, you see what we do. Uh, I'm the chief editor of uh, eventbranch.nl. That is uh, more or less the event media in the Netherlands. Um, and um, uh, we have got a second label. It's called Evenement Organiseren. But I will not bother you with this one because I know everybody is sitting at home. Um, everybody uh, has the same kitchen probably working from. Uh, and this is me uh, in the last couple of weeks. This is me during a coronavirus. Uh, I'm dad of two. Uh, I'm a terrible tennis player that is really going down on his level. Uh, I play, still play football, but I don't want to bore you with this one. Uh, but I think uh, at this moment, uh, next to being event professional, at this moment, we are all just people. Um, and we're in the, same, uh, in the same situation. And that situation will have a big impact um, on our industry and I will try to give you a, a view on how I think as a chief editor for now uh, 15 years, thank you for that one, um, what I think the impact will be and I, I, I uh, got at some um, frequently asked questions and I combined them in more or less uh, scenarios uh, and I will, I will compare them also with the scenarios we already had in our industry. Uh, so back to the slide. I'm also my first time in um, in the network table system, so please bear with me. Um, frequently asked questions. The biggest question and the most asked question um, was, will our world of events change? And yesterday, and I will start playing the video, it's in Dutch, so I, most of you will not understand it. This was yesterday in Utrecht, in the Fabriek, an event called, um, uh, they, they use the hashtag stay at home, but it's about how to touch each other when you're not in the same space, so online. And you now hear clapping because 50 iPads were there um, and they, uh, they were like the VIP guests for this event. And there was a lineup of great artists. I put them on pause because speaking through the noise is difficult. Um, but in uh, just a couple of days, they uh, they organized an event where um, uh, where there was a, 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 a great list of uh, of uh, entertainment over there because a lot of um, a lot of artists uh, they they really need their applause once in a while. Um, so um, the glimpse of the future will be not only based on online events or uh, based on uh, what will happen with our industry, but it's also looking back uh, on two major events that had a real big impact on our industry. Um, and for me, very important to start off with, uh, we got a lot of questions and welcome to all 30 participants at this moment. Again, I'm Sjoerd Wijkamp, Chief Editor of Eventbranch.nl. Um, but we, we got a lot of questions coming out of the industry. Um, and a lot of very intelligent people in our industry, uh, they asked us, um, uh, uh, well, we need, we need a context on this virus, first of all. And um, uh, I think we all went through the same phase, uh, first off, starting with, okay, it's in China, and uh, is it the flu? Is it just like the flu? And then people died, and then we started to compare the death that's normally when there's a flu. Um, but I think this is not about context. This discussion is not about context. This discussion is only by comparing uh, uh, death numbers. The discussion about the new context probably is one of the biggest we ever witnessed after uh, the Second World War. Um, and I will show you in this presentation uh, what I think is going to happen and what big impact it will have on our industry. And again, for all 30 now, um, uh, this is not the truth. I'm also looking into the future uh, like we all do, um, but I hope my uh, experience in the last 15 years 
makes some sense. So let's have a look. Um, to start off with, there was that first uh, big event that had one of the biggest impacts on our, um, on our industry, and it was the 9-11. Um, and that impact, just translating it to our industry, all of a sudden, security became one of the biggest uh, key uh, things on our, on our checklist. Um, and then you can ask your question, well, will, will then uh, the, the uh, COVID virus be uh, more or less in the same terms as the, um, as the security popping up out of nothing after 9-11? And of course, we saw then that security for venues or for um, uh, even for, for all the organize, organizers and brands as well, security became more or less even a USP. And it was one of the most important ingredients of organizing an event. Uh, and of course, um, this will happen with COVID as well. So um, uh, it will have an impact on, on social distancing. Will this be the future of our, of our event industry? In my opinion, I don't think so. I think after a while we, we get closer again and um, I'm not a, a medical scientist, but uh, of course this will not be the only virus we will have, but whenever a new virus will popping up, we need social distancing. So I don't think this will be the way we will cater ourselves during, during events. Um, but social distancing in the beginning when lights go on orange or, or even on green, uh, social distancing and, uh, and hygiene will be one of the key topics for every organizer in, in, in the whole of the world because you now see all the different strategies in the different countries. You see the period of time that it takes to, to even get to the highest point of death or, or uh, the highest point of the virus itself. Um, so this is not a picture we would like to see, but uh, for the first couple of months, um, this is something to think about. Uh, social distancing is not only in the world outside of events, it will be also inside the world of events. And to be honest, we've seen examples already in 2015. This is a video from Moscow uh, for the introduction of a new car. And you I'm sorry for the noise is too big, but I will explain what you what you will see in the video. Um, they use the venue with a lot of space between the seats, as you can see, and you can see now. It, just imagine being one and a half meter, as as the, uh, the 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 people are now telling us to to take distance from each other. Um, they organized an event uh, with no catering, with no decoration at all. It was all about VR. So I just give you a. a glimpse of this event and then I'll, then I'll get back to my uh, points for, for this keynote. So just take a look. This was 2015. It was the introduction of a new car. I'm sorry. Again, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm a first timer. I'm sorry, I have to stop. There's no audio, so I will stop the video. I'm sorry for that one. Um, we will check that on later. I will have another keynote uh, next week, so then, then the audio will be great. Um, uh, again, if you have any questions, we will now get to the points I want to share with you. And I just wanted to give you an example that events can be with social distancing as well. Um, but now we will get to the real points um, that I want to share with you. First of all, one of the biggest questions we had was, will then hygiene be uh, uh, as big as security? And I, don't, I think don't, do not underestimate um, uh, this, this global um, uh, thing that is going on. The, the hygiene, of course, will be a big part of all our business events. There will be no brand, no corporate that thinks that their, their events can be the next place where the the virus pops up again. So hygiene, especially in the first coming month when, when we can start organizing again, will be one of the biggest topics like security was. But do not think this is the only thing because where 9-11 was like an incident, was like a big event, this context of what um, uh, Corona is now doing for the whole of the world and especially for our industry that is about live contact is so big and so huge that we have to ask ourselves different questions. And these questions are more or less in the same terms as the, uh, the financial crisis uh, back in the days in 2008. Uh, and as you can see, I was there already. 
getting bold. Um, but the financial crisis, um, I think at the end, the 9-11 the and the financial crisis more or less together will have the impact that uh, Corona will have on our industry. But the financial crisis had one, one big impact and it's very, very difficult to make a, a, a prediction about this one. But when the financial crisis uh, uh, hit all the countries in the world, one of the first departments where people were sacked um, was the event department. Um, and to be honest, that was more or less on our own because at that time, um, we're still a young industry, but our industry had some real difficulties proving ROI or proving the impact or proving the effect uh, at least. Um, so it was very easy to sack or to, um, to lay off people from the event department. So even within marketing and communication departments, the first to go out in 2008 were the event managers. Uh, as you know, a lot of them started off as a freelance um, uh, agent in our industry and are still doing pretty good jobs. Uh, mo most of them got hired back from their, from their own brands or their own corporates. Um, but I think there's one positive thing that we, that we uh, achieved all together. Uh, and that's that our profession and the way corporates and brands use experiences and um, uh, and even live moments in their uh, strategy instead of just for a moment, we are we are now there. We are on top of the marketing and communication level. We are there together with all the old-fashioned communication and marketing uh, tools and media. Um, so this is this is a part where I strongly believe that we really. Um, we, we really are on top of the market, but to be honest, and that's not the most positive view in the world, um, uh, this economic impact that we will now face, uh, of course, me li living in the Netherlands, um, uh, only for the event industry, they're saying we will have a loss of 3.5 billion euros. Um, so this is not something that is only for industry. People all around the world in all different industries, uh, it will have a huge impact. It will have a huge impact on economics. It will have a huge impact on our business as well. So on the one part, I think we really made a statement in the last years, especially comparing to 2008, that the events and the live experiences, experience marketing or whatever you want to call it, is up there with all the, the older marketing tools. And uh, some of the brands even uh, uh, have turned their strategies into experience, uh, you know, uh, the, the customer experience, things like that. It's, it's normal to talk about that. In 2008, we were behind on a lot of different media and tools. Um, whenever you want to ask a question, please, you can raise your hand uh, or you can do it in the chat and I will try to see if something pops up uh, and then I will try to, to answer and you can unmute yourself then and ask me a question. Um, but I will go on because uh, at the end, there's a possibility for Q and A's as well. Uh, so I've got to go back to the presentation. Yeah. Um, so uh, at the end, comparing it to the financial crisis of 2008, um, yeah, budgets will go down and budgets even disappear. We did our, uh, our own um, uh, research for, uh, we started yesterday and we now have like 700 uh, questionnaires filled in. And uh, phew, when you see those numbers, sorry for that one. When you see those numbers, that's not something to uh, be very positive about the positive part will be after these two scenarios um, but not only uh, uh, events were postponed they were also really cancelled uh, and by really cancelled I mean they're out of the agenda and there are a lot of people that say well when in this in the third and fourth fourth quarter of this year when we get back to business everything will be just pumping and and our agenda will be full I don't agree on that point of view and I'm sorry for that one, even being one of the most positive people you probably will ever meet. Um, this will, in my opinion, will not be uh, very realistic. Yes, we will try to get back on track as soon as possible. Um, but remember that this has an impact on, uh, um, on bigger brands. Uh, as you all uh, experienced, the brands and the corporates were the first during this crisis to cancel their events. Uh, when, when people just walked around cities and went out to restaurants, our industry already felt the pre-measurements of a lot of corporates because they said, no, we will not organize it because we, are, we know what's coming up. And if, uh, for instance, Nike has an event where the virus uh, pops up and is like a, a place where it all starts again, 
Poo, that's a scary part for a brand. So, so we have to be very careful, and I will show you later on uh, in the next slides uh, what I think could be the best strategy. Again, ladies and gentlemen, I do not have the knowledge in, in uh, impact, but I'm here for like 15 years in the event industry, and this is just my opinion. I would love to talk to you later on during the Q&A. So um, what also happened uh, after the financial crisis, that was something very special because we all said to each other, it, also in all the media, all um, associations, we said, okay, this is the end of era. We will not go back to uh, big parties with, a, with too much food. And, and to be honest, if you look back at the, at the uh, first period after 2008, it was a difficult time. Um, we tried to, to get back on track and at the end we, we established to get back on track, but in my opinion, we were more or less uh, uh, talking about sustainability and doing some vegan catering or doing some tech tools, but, but it wasn't really integrated in the things we did. We went back on track. We did the same things prior to the financial crisis in 2008. So uh, in 2008 and 9, 10, 11, 12, uh, sustainability, sustainability disappeared. Um, uh, even tech tools were more or less not integrated into events. And it took us like 10 years, maybe eight years, to get back on track in terms of developing our own industry. Uh, so now when, at this moment where sustainability, vegan, uh, thinking about the climate, thinking about traveling, thinking about tech tools, thinking about making our events more sustainable um, now this happens and then the question of course is will then like in the year 2008 and the years afterwards will then these topics disappear again in my opinion no they will not i think this virus this this global warning that we got out of some virus that we cannot touch that we cannot see in my opinion, this is the moment that all the discussions we already had, um, uh, all the things about climate, about sustainability, this will now be common. And um, so when it all comes together, um, can you then talk about going back to basic, going back to normal? Sorry for the L dropping out of the picture. Uh, in my opinion, you, you cannot talk about going back to normal. But if you do want to talk about that, then there's like the facts that already pushes us away from what was normal. Uh, the first thing is that it will take an enormous amount of time to get back to normal because all the industries are infected by this. Uh, our industry as the first one and probably the last one to pick things up. And so it will take a lot of time. What also is going to happen is that permits for events and not only the festivals or the, the, the open events, but also the business events, look at the security thing happened in 9-11. We will have different things in our permits. We will have to make sure to local governments, to uh, wh whatever you have to organize your event or wherever, things will change. Permits will change. We have to take, a, take it a step up, but that's only the practical uh, impact of this virus. I think in a bigger context, this will be the moment that non-essential events will be cut out. And what is non-essential? That's not up to me, that's up to you, I think. Um, but there will be a change because our agendas, our event agendas in the last five years, four or five years, they got packed. It was, uh, for instance, the Netherlands, we have more than thousand festivals only. So, so open festivals, music, theater, thousand festivals with more than 3000 visitors in a small country as the Netherlands. And then we're not even talking about our own business, about the business events. So we have to cut down. We have to cut down on the number of events and making the events even a bigger touch point in the strategy, in the communication and marketing of, uh, uh, of brands and organizations than we already did. So we have to take it a step up in professionalization. But as you now see, we're talking now to all over the world people. I want to say hello for the people from India. That's great to have people from the other side of the world as well. Um, but online events, will now, it's not, it's not a coincidence that they now pop up. For a lot of live communication, for a lot of moments that, is, that are inside event strategies, the online event is, is a perfect tool, not only to interact, I'm sorry for doing this keynote because we only have half an hour, so I'm just sending old fashioned. Um, 
but uh, whenever you have a question, please raise your hand. Um, but it, it will have a big, big role in our new strategies. I think pre-phase, after-phase, it will all be online. And of course, the live moments that you, you can feel it now. We, in the Netherlands, we have that moment that the cows come out to go for the first time back to their grass fields and they, they start jumping. That's the feeling we all have, I'm sure for that one. We want to meet up with people again. And that's the thing that will support our industry getting back out of this, uh, out of this crisis. But we will use online events in a proper way, knowing how to do it, knowing what to do with it, in pre-phase, in after-phase, even in hybrid forms. Um, and, then, and then bringing down all the traveling, bringing down all the costs for, for catering and for things like that. I think this is what's going to happen. So time for change is probably the summary of all the questions we had, is also the summary of the scenarios. Um, and it will be more or less radical. I think this, this is the wake up call for a world that we created ourselves. The virus proved the vulnerability of the world that we created. And not only the world that we created, but also our industry. It also proved the vulnerability of our industry. Um, so again, number of events will go down. Online and hybrid will be more or less a standard. I'm not saying that online and hybrid will take over these live moments because uh, as event professionals, we all strongly believe in the economics of experience, the experience economy. Um, but experience can also be provided online and we will take steps and we will uh, evolve uh, and, and develop those online experiences as well. The example where I started off with, uh, people were even crying on their iPad. They were looking to the artist and they were crying at that moment. It was so impactful. Um, and next to that, tech will take the chance as well. Finally, uh, we could do a, an event where people in the Netherlands will meet up with people in India, in Germany, and in England uh, with uh, virtual reality or with augmented reality. And of course, still in the Netherlands could be a, a side event and in India as well, where people meet up, but then you open up to the rest of the world. So this is the moment that all the things we were talking about, all the people on, the, on like the, the early adapters in our industry that started screaming for, for years ago, please adapt these things. Now we're forced to adapt it. And in an even bigger picture, bigger picture, sustain, sustainability, climate, social awareness, um, equality, inclusiveness, uh, less traveling, and go on and go on. If you want to do it in the chat, please give me all the examples you, you are now thinking of. These will be more or less the basic principles of our industry. Um, and then summing it up, I think um, it's not only to show you what I think will be going on in the industry, it's also about a role that we have to take. And the menu in top is now, okay, there's the menu again, sorry. Um, so um, our role in the industry, in my opinion, is a very big one. We have to take responsibility. And that responsibility is also your business case for after this crisis. So to start off with, what could be a summary of what we have to do if we really want to go into the future and look into the future? Uh, because I know everybody now is, even positive people are closed up in their, in their homes or in their kitchens uh, watching a webinar. Um, for now, solidarity is one of the biggest key things in our industry. Uh, we have to go through this together. Uh, and there's a beautiful example in the Netherlands where a venue um, got a cancellation um, of a big event by a big brand in the Netherlands. And they explained what the impact was for the cancellation only two weeks prior to the event. Um, and then with all the measure, uh, all the uh, restrictions uh, during uh, the Corona crisis were already announced by the government. So they talked with their, with their client and they said, okay, I, I do understand what we are now forcing you to do uh, by sacking people. So they paid, they paid their uh, sum of money for the event that wasn't there and said, we will see each other at the end of this year or at the beginning of next year. And I'm not saying that we can walk to the brands or to the bigger companies to say, yeah, you have to pay because then we will survive. But this feeling of solidarity, we have to explain the position we are in. We are now, for instance, explaining to the government in the Netherlands that we are not about an event agency or a client or an event caterer. No, we are about all these different uh, types of event sports, as I would like to tell them, and that, that together make a huge impactful marketing or communication moment. 
So solidarity, however we can create it, is now number one priority. But after that, we have to use our creativity and we have to use event tech as well as all the online, digital or virtual live communication and experiences. Um, they have to be your priority because we will not organize events from now until uh, June is now in the Netherlands, the first date that was called out. But to be honest, the whole summer will go by. And, and even in months after that, will we organize bigger events? I don't know. I really don't know. So we have to be creative. We are the industry, I would like to say, not the industry of events, but we're the industry of live contact. And if you look at it from that point of view, we have a lot of opportunities going on. Um, again, by uh, organizing proper online events as well as digital events or, or virtual. And then at the end of it, when the crisis is over, we have to take it as a new starting point. And the impact of our industry is so huge that when this has the impact, as we now all feel it will have, being nice to each other is one of them as well, um, we have to step forward. We have to take the lead. The live moments for, for uh, governmental organizations, for brands, for, for corporates, they can show what they stand for from the moment we can get together again. They can also do it online and virtual, of course, but that moment when we can meet up again, maybe with a little, little bit more distance, maybe with a little bit more hygiene, this is our moment to take people by the hand, to take brands by the hand, because we can only show it by live moments. So then we're back on track. Um, this was my point of view, and it's very difficult for me as a first timer in this session to also look at questions. Um, but for now, if there are any questions, you can you can raise your hand, and I would love to have a discussion, an open discussion, uh, if possible. And if the people from Network Tables are still there, uh, we've got 34 people. Uh, there's a hand raised. Yeah, I can check it now. Uh, sorry, or it's 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 very easy to use system, but I have to check where the hand is. Uh, sorry, who was the one that uh, that uh, raised the hand? Can you put it in the chat so I can open your microphone? I also see a Q&A from Hanna. What does your expert expertise say about the chances and threats for uh, freelancers since the major increase in freelance since the previous crisis? Yeah, that's a very good one. I think we are more or less now, um, uh, I can answer live, that's cool. Uh, I think do you you would like to answer this question live. Um, Hannah, can you talk to us now? I think if you unmute yourself, we can talk, but I will I will give the answer and whenever you can talk, please just scream through me. Um, the question of Hannah is what does your expertise say about the chances and threats for freelancers uh, since the major increase in freelancers since the previous crisis? This is a very good question. I can only just pop up with an answer, so I'll try to do that. Um, after 2008, we had a lot of freelance, uh, very good freelance event managers and all types of those professionals in our industry. For now, these people will have like no income at all. Um, and, um, but they can, they can get back in business whenever things are getting started again. Uh, so the number of, uh, of freelancers is for the first couple of months, I think we will have a slow start. That's my opinion. That's, that's how I look at it it will be a very difficult time. But at the end, you can also be an advisor on how to survive these couple of months. And so get back on the three uh, examples I gave you and find some creativity, find some concepts in which brands or your former clients can use online tools or tech or virtual uh, reality or things like that to create, again, live interaction, live uh, contact with their clients or with their, with their partners or whatever they want to interact with. Um, so I don't think there's a big difference between being a freelancer at this moment and uh, being a, a company or a, an agency or whatever, except for that the governmental um, uh, uh, things that are now announced. Um, there's only one thing for the freelancers, for example, in the Netherlands, and that, that is to have a, like a small amount of money to, to buy your groceries. Um, so it will be a hard time for all of us, and I don't think there's just one... Uh, example or one answer for that question. Is there anybody else who raised the hand because this is a very difficult one? Um, to be sure, the, um, uh, the, my email address is underneath and I have a second session on 10th of April, uh, again about this topic. It will be more or less the same presentation. 
Um, but whenever you have another question, I will try to answer them. Uh, thank you for your elaborate answer. What would you focus on as an event professional in the Netherlands for the remainder of this year, since your forecast is that quarter three and quarter four won't be up to the level that we need just yet? Okay, again, a question from Hannah. Uh, first of all, I think it's, it's a global answer. It's not only about the Netherlands. Um, focus on me being wrong. Focus on, on the possibility that, that things will be more or less back to normal. Uh, focus uh, on uh, that in your mind and in your heart. Be positive. Try everything you, you can. But then next to that, um, my focus would be on uh, combining powers with uh, tech people, combining powers with the, the early adapters. And for those people, it will sound very strange because they're there for like 15 years already. But the early adapters on online events, on everything we can do, as long as we not can meet up, we have to be creative and the possibilities are there. Um, so I hope this more or less answers your, answers your question. Uh, another question, and it's probably one of the last one because the time is running out. Um, and please mail me your questions and we'll try to get back at you. But the last question I can answer, uh, no, the first last question, I will do two more questions. Uh, Glenn Martins, do you think that celebrating life will not return after the government unlocks the country? Uh, it's not a financial crisis, says Glenn. Um, it's not a financial crisis and that's something where i have like that positive feeling that when things get started up again that the economics probably will i hope will boost uh, uh and, and and will will be back on track as soon as possible on the other hand glenn um this is a global thing and and as you look at the different countries and the impact on different countries uh airlines being shut down um at food this is this is something not for me to predict, but I want to stay positive and I want to take everything we can. Um, but I think whenever the, the country is unlocked, ooh, we will be careful, I think. Um, you know that uh, after the first weeks after 9-11, uh, we were like, uh, I don't know if the word was scared, but it, it made a big impact. Um, this, in my opinion, again, will have a bigger impact because we now have uh, uh, countries in, in the Western part of the world that are now facing a lack of medical staff. So uh, uh, my former neighbor, uh, she lives now in, in Bergamo and she tells me that for like two weeks ago already, people in front of the hospital decide if you can come in if, or that you have to go back to home and, and slowly die. And that's, that is more or less the, the end of, of the world as we know it. And that could be a song as well. Um, but but it's, it's as big as that. And I don't think we have to underestimate it. But I do think that we have a big chance to, to be the industry that picked things up as the first one and as the strongest one and to take people by the hand. Hannah will email me. Uh, I hope everybody enjoyed the session. Uh, I'm sorry that the, the, the first time for me also in the system, it was a little bit searching for things. Uh, I will answer the questions in the chat. Um, but I promised the people to uh, to be on time, so we're just out three minutes late. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, stay strong. Oh, yeah, this was my last slide. Sorry for that one, folks. Stay strong. Uh, in my opinion, stay positive as well. Try to do your utmost best. Um, and we're all in this together. Bye.